bring them all at one go to generate the electricity at its maximum, then the grid could collapse. So you therefore need to feed the electricity in a number of areas on possibly a sequential basis and uh, switch off other areas and switch other areas on until you reach a stage where all units are then able to give you the in electricity we need. And this is possibly what maybe we don't all understand because load shedding is the last resort. Uh, if we ever wanted that there should be no lo load shedding, the grid would collapse because a number of units for reasons that we have dealt with are not at the time available. And as we speak now, the availability factor for electricity has gone down below 50%. So much as we want that energy must, electricity must be generated for all and sundry all at one go, it is just practically engineering wise not possible. And it is for this reason that government wants to shed light through this whole process on the impracticality of doing all that. And yet the more practical way is to do it, to do your load shedding in sequence, where you are able to shed load for a number of areas. Ideally, I would personally want all those hospitals, and schools to be exempt. But from an engineering point of view, I am told that it is practically impossible to do. So now we are faced with a court judgment and the impracticality of it all. So the process of then approaching the court through an appeal process is to bring to bear a better understanding so that there can be understanding of the engineering aspects and the impracticality aspects of it all. And by the way, it is not being done in an arrogant way, in a way where we're trying to to say second guess the court, it is actually being done to ensure that we save the grid because otherwise it would collapse if we were to implement that judgment in full. I hope that makes it clear, thank you.